Hi booktube, my name is Sarah and welcome to the Bookish Knitter. Today I'm coming to you with a Friday Reads, so happy Friday everybody. It is the 21st of May 2021, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm off work today. I have a long weekend, an extra long weekend, because on Monday is, is it Victoria Day here in Canada? I don't know. Monday's a holiday here in Canada. I'm pretty sure it's Victoria Day. We've always referred to it as the May 2-4, <laughs> because it always falls close to the 24th of May, and this year it just happens to fall on the 24th of May. I'm pretty sure it's Victoria Day, which I think what we're celebrating is the Queen's birthday. So, hey, I'll take the day off. Um, so I decided to go ahead and book the Friday off and give myself a four-day long weekend. So stoked about that. And the best part is, is that I go back on Tuesday, I work until Friday, and then the week after that, I only work four days as well because I'm off on the 4th of June. So I have every other Friday off for the next, um, for, I did this in May and June to use up some of my vacation days before our fiscal year end at work. So yay me. Um, I was actually going to vlog this weekend. I had really, really thought about vlogging this weekend, but guys, legitimately, I have zero plans. Like all you're going to see is me just saying, Hey, look, I'm like, I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything. We're still on lockdown. Sorry. That's my computer. We're still on lockdown and all that stuff. So I think I'm going to hold off and I'm definitely going to vlog though in July, in June, um, for the categorically romance readathon that I am hosting. I'm going to vlog on one of those weekends. Um, make it a long weekend anyway, like, you know, um, I actually might do it right at the beginning, like, uh, in two weeks, do it the fourth, the fifth and the sixth or something like that. So, um, because not that anything's going to be open, but because it's for the readathon, it might be just a little bit more themed. You know what I mean? Um, so for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, the categorically romance readathon, I am co-hosting it with my best friend, Brie. We also co-host the Categorically Romance podcast, but it is a readathon dedicated to nothing but category romance. I will leave my announcement uh, video in the description box below, the link to that. So if you haven't seen that yet, please go ahead and do so. Um, so yeah, so I am here today to share with you what I'm going to be reading today. And as usual, I'm looking for you guys to pick me my next book to read. Both of these books I want to get to before the end of the month, but which one should I get to first? And then I do have a book haul. I have a pretty decent book haul, actually, you guys. Um, a lot of ebooks this week and actually a couple of physical books, which is kind of fun. So let's get into what I am reading today. So first of all, I am still listening to on audio Daughters of the Bride by Susan Mallory. This is the third book in the Los Lobos series, but I, in my opinion, because I think I read the first one, you could read this one as a standalone. It is... It feels to me like a women's fiction because it's really centered around these three sisters and their mother, and the mother is getting married, hence the title of the story. And the three sisters are all very different, and it's kind of dealing with their own individual lives, like the one is putting herself through college or university and hasn't told the rest of her family. The other one is kind of um, roped into this engagement to a guy she really doesn't want to get married to. Um, that's probably my most entertaining storyline that I'm reading so far. And then the third sister is divorced from her husband after he cheated on her, but they may try and work things out. And then the mother um, dealing with the wedding. So there's kind of a lot of moving parts within this book. But it's been really good. I mean, it's Susan Mallory. I love her stuff. Now, like I said, it's the third book in the Los Lobos series, but I just think it's more of like a companion novel. Like all these stories that happen take place in the same small town in California. So that's just my take on it. But I am enjoying it. This I am reading for the Book Sisters Book Club. Um, just in case, for those of you who don't know, um, the live show is not going tomorrow. Uh, we do have an extra Saturday in May. There's five Saturdays in May, so we're pushing it to next Saturday. And we will announce what book is the winner for June in that live show. So stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, and it's going to be here on my channel, is going to be the discussion video on this book. So I'm very, very much looking forward to that. So that's my current audiobook. My current ebook that I am reading does not come out until July, I think. So this is a net galley read. And I'm reading A Brambleberry Summer by Rayanne Thane. Um, I'm enjoying this one quite a bit. I think it's the sixth book in the Brambleberry uh, series by her, which is which centers around a house, this place called the Brambleberry House. And each of the stories involves women who have lived in this house. Um, and this is the story of Rosa and the town sheriff Wyatt. And I'm not very far into it, maybe only about four chapters. So the thing is, is that I started reading this last week. I think I might have even talked about this one last week or that I was going to pick it up. 
But what happened was, is that I got in the mood to read that cowboy. I know, I was like mood reading. I got in the mood to read that a good old fashioned cowboy, <clears throat> the anthology by Maisie Yates. Um, Maisie Yates, Caitlin Cruz, Jackie Asherton, and Nicole Helm. And what happened was, <laughs> My reading went down the toilet this week, you guys, legit. So on Saturday, um, now I know I recorded last Sunday, but on Saturday I had a bad case of the nerves all day because I was getting my um, my first vaccination and I didn't know how I was going to react to it and I didn't know what kind of a side effect I might have. So I was pretty irritable all day and I just was not in the mood to do any reading or anything like that. Um, so then after that happened and everything was fine, I felt much better, like the anxiety was gone. But Sunday, I was exhausted. I mean, I recorded my weekly reads video, and then I pretty much didn't move for the rest of the week, for the rest of the day. I went to bed super early. I napped for three hours in the afternoon and then went to bed early. Like, clearly that was my side effect, was just exhaustion. Monday comes, and Monday was crazy pants at work. Like, I'm all for being busy. Keep me busy at work makes the day go so much faster. But there's busy, but then there's crazy pants busy. And it was ridiculous. Like, I had almost no time to do anything else. Um, like, to get up and go to the washroom or to get something to eat or get a drink. You know what I mean? It was, like, that busy. And then Tuesday and Wednesday, it calmed down. And Thursday. So, that was a bit better. But it took me from... I started that cowboy book on Saturday and I didn't finish it till yesterday, which is not like me at all. So I'm finally getting back to this one. I was about four chapters into it, so I've picked it back up again. Um, and, you know, I'm enjoying it. It's a Ray Thane. So, you know, it's it's fun. Um, and I'm hoping to get some really good reading done over the next four days. That's part of my goal. Because I'd like to get through a lot, of, a lot more books before the end of the month. Would be really, really nice. Because the end of the month is like next Sunday, you guys. It's crazy absolutely crazy. So yeah, so that's what I am currently reading there. Um, now, to pick me a book, you guys. So there are two books that I would like you to pick from. One of them is part of my book haul. So I'll show you guys that one first. This one is part of my book haul. Now, I did have this one from NetGalley, but I am a big, big fan of this author, so I decided to go ahead and get the edition physically, and that is The Bookstore on the Beach by Brenda Novak. So this is the first one I want you guys to pick from. Um, I didn't even know what this was about until I read the back of it because I'm a huge fan of friend, uh, fan, friend, I wish I was a friend of Brenda Novak, um, a huge fan of Brenda Novak, and I just see her books come up and I'm like, yes, please. So I ordered this one, or I, I requested on NetGalley, I got it, it just came out recently, so I want to get it read by the end of the month, I think it came out this month, and, um, it says just here on the back, I'm just going to read this. It says, how do you start a new chapter of your life when you haven't closed the book on the previous one? So I had no idea what this was going to be about. I thought this was going to be a really cute, it, it could be, it could be. Don't get me wrong. I haven't read it yet, so I don't know. But like a really cute, fluffy kind of summer romance kind of an idea. But it turns out it's about a woman whose husband went missing 18 months ago. So she goes back to the small town that she um, grew up in and then potentially might start a relationship with like her old high school boyfriend, but her husband is still missing. <laughs> I am totally intrigued by this and it just sounds really, really good. So again, both of the books I'm going to mention, I want to get to. My plan is to read them both before the end of the month. However, which one should I pick up this weekend? This one or the other pick is this one that I've been talking about a lot. And I'm really excited about this one too which is The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. I have this one for my Kobo. I bought it when it was released. It came out a couple months ago. And this is a retelling of Jane Eyre, a modern day retelling of Jane Eyre. Also sort of, I guess, with elements of Rebecca because Rebecca was sort of kind of a retelling of Jane Eyre as well. You know what I mean? And I talked about this when I talked about the fact that I read Rebecca this month, reread Rebecca this month, that I am gonna do a video, uh, once I'm finished this one, of all three books kind of comparing comparing them in a way, right? So which one should I pick up first? The Wife Upstairs or the Bookstore on the Beach? Let me know. Let me know which one. <laughs> which one should I pick up first? So um, I will get to, let me see here. Oops, sorry. Let me just go back here on my tablet. Okay, so let me show you the other physical book that I actually picked up. I didn't buy this this month. I actually bought this, I think, back in April, but it came from um, Book Outlet, not Book Outlet, 
book depository um, because I love the UK covers. I have an addiction to the UK covers and I did not have a copy of this book on my shelf and I'm a huge fan of Jill Shalvis and I saw this one and I'm like, I need this book. So that book is Second Chance Summer by Jill Shalvis. I think it's the first in a series. Am I talking, uh, uh, am I talking about what I know? Like, uh, do I know what I'm talking about here? I'm just sorry. Got my computer open in front of me. Let's have a look, shall we? I think it's the first in a series. Second Chance I can type. Good Lord, it's like I'm not working today, so all of a sudden my brain just forgets how to do things. Second Chance Summer by Jill, by the great Jill Shalvis. I think this is, yes, it's the first in the Cedar Ridge series. So this is the UK edition, guys. Look at this cover. I kind of sort of want to get to this one before the end of the month, too. Got a lot of reading to do this month, you guys. I got some catching up to do. I just feel like I've kind of been slacking a bit at the end of the month, like towards the end of the month. So yeah, I would really love to get to this one too. So I just might. Um, how would you feel if you ran into the man who broke your heart? Oh, doesn't it look fantastic? Oh. So yeah, so that was a new purchase. That's a new purchase. So I may get to that one this month. Now, all the rest of the books are all eBooks. So first off, I'll start with my Harlequin books because there is a sale today on the Harlequin website. It's buy four books, get 40% off. So I bought four eBooks because I, I've said it before, I have a lot of physical editions of my Harlequins. I need another shelf. I need another bookshelf before I can do, before I can buy any more books. So I am, um, I am adding to my collection digitally, essentially. So the first one that I got here, so I've got all the covers up here for you guys, is Stuck With You by Vicki Lewis Thompson. This is an old love and laughter book. I literally, I was originally going to get some new releases, and I'm like, let's find some old stuff. So I went on the Harlequin website, and they have a ton of these older books in ebook format, and I kind of went to town and I got four of them. So I'm very excited. So this is the first one. Like I said, it's an old love and laughter. This is a series or an imprint that is no longer being published. It is, of course, as you can imagine, it's a rom-com series. Vicki Lewis Thompson is fantastic. She wrote for Blaze for the longest time as well. This was originally published in October of 1996, and it's the fifth book in the Love and Laughter series. So I'm very excited to get to that one. The next one, this cover I just thought was so, so pretty. And it's called The New Hope Cafe by Don Atkins. Look at that, you guys. What a great cover. What a, don't you just want to visit that, like, go sit at that cafe and, like, have, like, a beverage of choice and just, like, read a book? Wouldn't that be lovely? So this is a Harlequin Super Romance, and it was originally published in October of 2012. So I'm looking forward to getting to that one. The next one, I did have to get an old Harlequin historical. I do love these so much, and it's a Western one. We have uh, McCavitt's Bride, uh, and this is by Carol Finch. The West was her way out, it says on the cover. This is originally from June of 2007. Um, Harlequin Historical number 852. So, yeah, it's from a while ago, you guys. It's from a while ago. What's that, 14 years? That's a long time. From a while ago. So, yeah, I love these old... I love the old historical covers, and I love how, by looking at them, you wouldn't have known that they were part of category that they look like any other historical romance that you would have picked up off of your book, sh off of your, your shelf at your grocery store or your big box store or wherever. So I do love these old ones. I think they're really pretty. And a lot of them did have step backs, like if you got them physically. Um, the last one from Harlequin that I got was another old super romance. And this is Listen to the Child by Carolyn McSparren. Um, this is part of the Creature Comfort series. So clearly it involves a veterinarian, and this is from September of 2002, so an older one. I believe that's a corgi, a corgi dog right there, so yay on that one. Very excited, very excited. So then I picked up some books for the Kindle. Um, <clears throat> so uh, yeah, some of these are, this one was free, I can tell you. Okay, so as I go through these, I'll let you know. So this one came up for free, and it's part of the Property Sisters of Montana series, and it's called Montana Brew Blueprint for Love by Deborah Salomon, I think. I've read her before. She has written for Category. Um, and this one looks really, really cute. It's the first book in the Property Sisters of Montana ser book series. And it was free. So if you guys want to go ahead and pick it up and give it a try, if you guys are into cowboy type romances, you might like this one. So yeah. Um, it says, is she restoring this old house or reimagining her future with the man she left behind? So, and I'm pretty sure 
don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure this author writes clean romances. So there's no adult content in them, but again, don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% certain. The next few books are new releases that came out on Tuesday that I had pre-ordered. And this one looks really, really fun. And it's called Last Summer at the Golden Hotel. This is by Elise Freeman. And it says, a family reunion for the ages when two clans convene for the summer at their beloved getaway in the Catskills. Perfect for fans of Dirty Dancing and the Marvelous Miss Maisie from the acclaimed author of The Floating Freeman. So I haven't read that first one yet, like her other book. But this one, as soon as it said like fans of Dirty Dancing and in the Catskills, I was all about it because that is one of my favorite movies. And years ago when my husband and I went, uh, when he came with me to the um, New York Sheep and Wool Festival in October, it was about four years ago now, we were driving down and we drove through the Catskills and all I could think about was Dirty Dancing. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm here. I'm where they were filmed. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, I'm looking forward to this one. I think this one will be a great, great summertime read. I'll have to try and get to it this summer. I, I always talk about the fact that I put together these, you know, TBRs and yada, yada, yada. And like, I, this is, I stick to my TBR, but June's TBR is already done. Now, July, however, I think this one is probably going to go on my July TBR. So that's my way of mood reading is that if there's books from the month before or something that really, really strike my fancy, something that I really want to read, I will make a note of it. And then when I put together my TBR for the next month, I will make sure to add it on there. So that's kind of my way of getting the mood read a bit because it just means I've got something to look forward to, right, with a book that I'm really excited about. The next one is a YA novel, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's called Last Chance Books. And this is by Kelsey uh, Rodkey. Rodkey. Now I saw a bunch of YA books. They were highlighting them on Goodreads a couple of weeks ago. Like they had like a blog post of like the hot new YA novels coming out this summer. And I put a couple of them on hold, on um, on pre-order because some of them really look cute. It says This one says, you've got mail meets Morgan Matson in this smart banter filled rom-com with a bookish twist. I'm sold. I'm sold. It looks adorable. So I'm looking forward to getting to that one. This next one, anyone who's watched my channel for any length of time knows this one immediately went on pre-order. I did request this one from NetGalley, but I wasn't approved for it. And that's fine. Now I get to support the authors by getting the book. And that is Soulmate, The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. So I am really excited about this one. Um, yeah, this one looks so good. It says the New York Times bestselling author, authors, because it's a duo, um, of the Unhoneymooners returns with a witty and, um, a witty novel about what happens when two people with everything on the line are thrown together by science, or is it fate? Perfect for fans of the Rosie Project and One Plus One. I've not read One Plus One, but I've read the Rosie Project. I really liked it. So I've heard this one is really good. Um, just some of the reviews I've heard. I haven't read any reviews on it because... I don't want to be spoiled for anything, but I am very, very much looking forward to this one. Um, next up, that was it for my pre-orders. Um, the next three books were all like daily deals from um, Kindle or yeah, from Kindle. The first one was the fairly new Debbie Maycomber. I believe this might've come out last year, Cottage by the Sea. This came up as a daily deal. It was like $1.99. So it says a seaside town helps one young woman reclaim the light after the darkness. Sounds good. I mean, it's Debbie Maycomber. You can't go wrong with her at all. You know, you, you know what you're getting when you pick up a Debbie Maycomber novel, essentially. The next one is a historical romance, and I just love the cover. And this is Believe in Me by Ella Quinn. Um, this is the sixth book in the Worthington series, it says. It says, a humorous historical Regency romance. Um, the best-selling Regency romance series continues as, as Dashing Man of the World Hopes to Settle Down with the Lady Who'd Rather Travel. Doesn't that sound delightful? Oh. I'll have to, I'll probably have to read the other five books first, but, uh, I, again, it was on sale for like $1.99, so why not? Um, and then the last one, this was on sale today on Friday. This is a cozy mystery, and this is, I don't know what book number it is in the series. Does it tell me here? It's book six in a main clam bake mystery series, and this is called Stoned Away, I believe. <laughs> I love New England. I really, really love New England. Um, so any book set in that New England area just really tickles my fancy, if you will. So a cozy mystery set there. I have not read any of the others in the series. I'll have to pick them up. But this one was on sale today, so I went ahead and, and grabbed it. 
And the last book is another book that was on sale today. This was for the Kobo. I don't know if it's on sale for the Kindle. Let's find out, shall we? Let's all find out together. Just in case you guys have, you know, a Kindle and you don't have a Kobo. So it's on sale for $3.99. It was only a dollar or $2.99 for, um, for the Kobo. So this is Darling Rose Gold by Stephanie Warble. I have heard about this book a lot and I thought it was a YA, but it's not. It's a thriller. So it says a dark, shocking and unput downable thriller debut about a mother and daughter and the lengths to which the daughter will go to find independence. So I did read the back of it. For those of you who like to go into your thrillers without knowing anything, I'm not going to say anything more. But this one sounds really good. So I'm intrigued. I don't, I don't know any reviews on this. I don't know what other people thought about it. I don't want to read that. I just want to go in and enjoy it for what it is for me. Um, but yeah, so I am very, very much looking forward to that one. So there's my big book haul for the day or for this week, you guys. <laughs> I do love my ebooks. I really, really, I mean, like, look, there's 12 ebooks that I bought. How much room would they have taken up on a shelf? And they're like contained within, I don't know, I don't have my Copa or my Kindle beside me, but this is my Samsung tablet. I could read them all off of here. And Bob's your uncle. So yeah, so I'm really, really happy with everything that I picked up. Um, anyway, you guys, that is all that I have for today's video. I do hope that you enjoyed it. Um, I've got my coffee. I'm going to sit and I'm going to edit this and then I'm going to... My mom and I are going over to my aunt's house later for a little visit because we haven't seen her in a couple weeks. She lives alone. We've all been given our first vaccine, so and none of us go anywhere, so we're not worried about that at all. But we're going to go visit her, bring her a coffee. Um, I missed having a coffee yesterday because I usually go to Tim Hortons every morning. I know, I know. I could buy it for cheap. I, I know. I could make it in my Keurig. The, I just like picking it up in the morning. It makes me happy. I get a small. So went to McDonald's yesterday morning and the lineup was ridiculous. And I'm like, I'm not waiting in line. It's just a coffee. I can go without a coffee. By yesterday afternoon, you guys, I had such a headache. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm now caffeine dependent. <laughs> I didn't think that that was ever going to happen because I drink it for like, because I like the taste of it. Um, but clearly I am also dependent on it. So I did stop this morning and get a coffee at McDonald's. And I am using my broomstick coffee mug that I love so much because every day is Halloween around here. <laughs> at least in my heart. Cheers. So anyway, you guys, happy Friday. I hope you have a fabulous weekend. For my fellow Canadians, have a great long weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Speaking of, the next one coming this week on Wednesday will be my TBR for the month of June. Talk to you guys then. Bye.